Hi, and welcome to an Orion Opinion Piece video in which I give my own subjective opinions rather than presenting facts. And this one, too, will be about my personal divide over the Sando Aqua Monster, this time delving more into the basics of the very centerpiece of that polarization. Before I get to the epicenter, which this video marks the 28th anniversary of, let me give you a little background as to catch up to my past before it catches up to me. Though more to do with my feelings on Star Wars than on Star Trek, my early childhood trauma of first writing Star Tours at Disneyland before even hearing of Star Wars did influence how I got into other Star Trek after my first one. In the early 1990s, my foster family was watching episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation on television, which for me, at the time, was the one and only Star Trek I knew of due to my exposure back then. I eventually got hooked on Star Trek The Next Generation and the Star Trek brand through a then-already rerun titled A Matter of Honor due to the Enterprise D dealing with a Klingon vessel, and I initially saw the Klingons as just bad guys, including in TNG, which I'll get back to shortly. When I saw a smaller Star Trek ship, I was hesitant at first, though it was the older Star Trek, and it took some convincing to get me into it, and people in my life at the time thought I somehow disliked it when I really didn't. I almost got into Star Trek the original series one day while Star Trek V The Final Frontier was on TV, but I still didn't. When Deep Space Nine first debuted, I didn't get into it because it had runabouts, which kind of reminded me of the aforementioned Star Tours as the main spacecraft from the titular space station rather than a large starship like the Enterprise-D. My curiosity about when the Klingon vessel I first saw in a matter of honor TNG, which I then found out was called the Klingon Bird of Prey, blew up, was answered by Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, which I bought a copy of and watched many times for that reason. The TUS motion picture enterprise design of the refit or the A was really the final hook that got me into Kirk when I initially saw Picard as the one true Star Trek. The epicenter of my divide over the Sando Aqua Monster is the first Star Trek TNG movie and a subsequent Star Trek TV show spinoff, especially its pilot episode. My Kirk vs. Picard divide revolves around the ten legacy Star Trek motion pictures more than the five TV shows from 1966 to 2005. All of Star Trek released or started prior to 28 years ago today was whole in me when it comes to Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace and in a mostly Sando-friendly manner by eliminating my former apples-to-oranges comparisons of Star Trek and Star Wars that I've now disowned. The first and main exponent of my epicenter of divide over the Sando Aqua Monster is Star Trek Generations, which opened in theaters 28 years ago today as of this recording and upload, but I was hesitant to see this movie in theaters at first, finally seeing it in theaters in very early January 1995. The first thing that set up this nasty divide for me and the one I noticed on the double was the destruction of the Enterprise-D, which I tried to forget and sweep under the rug at the time, and due to some errors in judgment, I filled in this void with something that had a deleterious effect on my character. The other and bigger thing that was more culpable in this divide, that flew under my radar until Christmas 1996, was the death of James T. Kirk on Viridian 3 in the climax of Star Trek Generations, which, though I saw, was I was too clocked out to take serious note of at the time. This was compounded by the then-starting Star Trek Voyager, especially with the pilot episode of Caretaker, which first aired on UPN on January 16th, 1995, and was kind of associated with Generations. Therefore, the TV show ended the equation of this epicenter of Divide in Me. That's because Voyager was not only smaller than the Galaxy Quest, but my foster mother underestimated its size to be smaller than any Starship Enterprise before it, along with the subtle feel I got from it while still enjoying it over Deep Space Nine. Though the thing between Generations and Caretaker Voyager was the epicenter of my divide over the Sando Aqua Monster, there were plenty of other things to follow to lead me into tearing myself up mentally over that one Star Wars animal, starting with twin missed opportunities in the fall of 1995. Though I watched The Way of the Warrior DS9 with enthusiasm due to how the Klingons decided to be the Federation's enemy again just to attack the Cardassians, I somehow didn't yet get hooked on the show. 
when I finally saw Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan for the first times in my life, when it came on TV, I enjoyed the movie but failed to recognize it for being my favorite movie at the time that it truly was, but still loved it nevertheless. When I got a copy of the Star Trek chronology for Christmas 1996, I finally took notice of Kirk's death at the end of Generations. Though I was a teeny bit hesitant of this then brand new Sovereign class Enterprise, especially after getting hooked on Kirk's movie Enterprises, I still wanted to see Star Trek First Contact in theaters, but didn't get to on opening day due to some outbursts I had at the time. I finally got to see First Contact on the day after Christmas 1996 after a pep talk, and due to me bottling up my feelings on Star Wars after not heeding warnings to avoid it a few years before, I sloppily declared First Contact as my favorite movie and the Enterprise E as my favorite starship. The Enterprise E filled in voids left from before up to the destruction of the Enterprise D in Generations, and in a way that was deleterious and set me up for future hang-ups, the one good thing I can say is the Enterprise E ended my self-destructive 1996 Star Wars phase. This updated edition of the Star Trek Encyclopedia, which I first saw in December 1996, is where my foster mother's assumptions on Voyager's size got corrected and proven to be bigger than Kirk's Enterprises, but smaller than the Excelsior class. For careful self-examination, I realized that had I listened to my foster brother's warning to avoid Star Wars, I would have noticed Kirk's death in Generations on the double and have filled in that void with at least declaring The Wrath of Khan as my favorite movie when I first saw it on TV in 1995. Therefore, ending my divide over the Sando Aqua Monster before it began, and I would have fully functioned from 1999 onward. The lesson I learned from making this very video is to not neglect self-care since my divide over the Sando Aqua Monster was due to my prior negligence in basic self-care and missed opportunities to fortify my mental health, even when I saw at least subtle red flags. My Reminiscence Kirk and Reminiscence Picard bumps each accumulate what I call satellites based on if those satellites are better suited for Sando friendly or Sando's head on a platter purposes in me rather than respective likenesses to each captain. However, I'm not trying to influence anyone's Star Trek preferences here, and I know that people will associate Kirk and Picard with different things from either me or each other, which is perfectly fine. It's just that as far as I know for certain, it's just me that sees Kirk as largely Sando-friendly and Picard as virently anti-Sando between the two captains in my own quirky associations. Thanks to making this video, I was able to bump my anger at the Sando Aqua Monster down a peg from a polarizing 7 out of 10, as I stated in my previous Orion Opinion piece, to what turns out to be my sweet spot on the beast of 6 out of 10, and yes, I have been and always shall be protective of Colo Clawfish. This video has been about the basics and history behind my central Kirk vs. Picard divide in my polarization over the Sando Aqua Monster, and though my personal history given is factually true, my own feelings and associations stated in this video are just purely subjective opinion that you're free to disagree with. This Orion opinion piece has been very cathartic and healing for me and turned out to be the final nail in the coffin of my polarization over the Sando Aqua Monster 59 days ahead of schedule so I will focus on how to organize myself in accordance with the astonishing new results of me making this particular video.